Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Falling Skies Fan Podcast. We're brought to you by TigerPrinceRadio.com. I'm your host, Hank Davis, and joining me on the line, he is my partner in crime. He's Alex Cruz. How the heck are you, buddy? Hey, great. We're back after a week of, uh, or two weeks from our last ep- episode of Falling Skies. And right off the top, Alex, let's talk ratings. All right, ratings. I think that little space kind of hurt us a little bit because our ratings are at its all-time lowest with a 3.34 million viewers. Yikes. So (laughs) I, I don't know if they consider that being steady or what, but if we, uh, nope, I don't even have that previous week's the previous episode, let's see, the previous episode of, here we are, of, uh, Mo, uh, let's see, it was a 3.45. So it not really no major difference. Okay. So we're right in that ballpark, but it just seems like we keep saying down just a little bit from week yeah. to week. And that's, that's a little scary. Luckily, we have already been renewed. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. So the Hank Davis curse has not yet set foot upon falling skies. Not yet. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance, Alex? Anything else before we get into the recap of Death March? Uh nope. Um, we're getting right at the tail end. We got two more episodes left. And um, I'm really excited about the next episode because it's written by uh, Mark Verheiden, who is one of the creators of the show. Yes, and who hits a home run every time he writes. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we wish would write all the episodes sometimes. But uh, I'll digress. Let's start out with Death March. So in the beginning of this episode, the team is on the road. And as Wayne Henderson say, says, it's at night. they're heading towards charleston so tom's staring out the window and he remembers his conversation with ben now i like that i like that they didn't go last week last time on falling skies you know what i mean they didn't go too crazy with that and instead they kind of used tom tom and his opening scene as the flashback yeah, that's I I kind of like that too. Yeah, I so mean, you, you don't have to waste any time. Yeah, you know, on the previous week <laughs> on the previous Basically episode, the <laughs> they show you like a, a five minute montage of everything that happens. Right. But uh, Matt snaps Tom out of it by asking the age old question: Are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> How, how much further to Charleston? I'll be like, sit down and shut up. No. <laughs> yeah, do what my dad used to say. Hey, you don't worry about it. You driving? Don't worry about it then. But here's where it gets crazy. Matt hands Tom his will. <laughs> how how kind of, that's kind of was kind of macabre, I thought. Just creepy. A little dark. Well, that little kid's witnessed a lot of death in his young age, so. And I, 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 I thought I thought that was, that that was good, even though it it, it was extremely dark. Yes, it it was very interesting to see him, you know, conjure up this. <laughs> I leave my little ripstick to so and so, you know. Uh, that was that was sets the tone of the show, I think. Yeah. Weaver and Tech are up front in the convoy, and they have a nice exchange. So early on, we start to see a trend here. Because next, Hal and Maggie, they have their own vehicle. It's a scout vehicle. And and they're sitting there talking, and Pope pops up, and he gave me a freaking heart attack. I don't know about you, Alex. <laughs> he just pops in that little window. I was like, oh. <laughs> You know what, this, this whole episode reminded me of an episode of Love Boat. <laughs> because all it was was is about the it, it was about one big trip. <laughs> oh, and my what goodness. what goes on during that trip. And so what was really cool is we find out a lot of things that we haven't found out 
before about some of these characters. I mean, yep. we find out things about Pope that we'll talk about later on. We'll find things about Tector that we didn't know about, as well as Maggie. Yeah. And I, you know, early on, you see the, the setup. It's going to be these long conversations. And you can either look at that and go, wow, this is going to be a stink fest. Or you can look at it as, hey, they're finally going to develop a character like Tech. Or they're going to finally reveal a little bit of the past about Maggie and stuff. You know, you can look at it either way. But I yeah, thought, you know what? I th because the the season are are only ten episode seasons. I think it's kind of refreshing to kind of instead of going action, 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 to just kind of, like for one episode, just kind of sit back and see some. Uh, character development and yeah. that's what we saw in this episode yes and i was very shocked that they chose tech to be one of those characters to get developed i was kind of shocked by that yeah tech, tech he's kind of one of those characters though that he's kind of borderline red shirt yes you, you, you never know you just wait for him to bite it that's what i keep just waiting for him to bite it he may might make it through all the whole series who knows but it's it's an interesting idea now, Maggie makes one comment to Hal that I thought was very interesting, is, and it was about how much darkness is in your soul. She, she's saying pretty much nothing. <laughs> and, and he's trying to act like a tough guy, like, yeah, I could kill Pope, or I could do this, or I could do that. And she's like, no, you couldn't. <laughs> yeah, that, that was an interesting exchange because... Maggie, as we're going to find out, has experienced a lot of darkness in her life where Hal, he's had a, he's had a, a steady, a steady life with having both a mom and dad there to support him and stuff. And so it, it's, yeah. it, it, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of funny because there's, there's that little interaction between Maggie and Hal and Maggie's kind of like ragging on him, <laughs> play, pl playfully ragging on him about how dark he really isn't <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't be bruce wayne that's for sure <laughs> lordis is working on somebody in the medical bus and then she quits and walks away this gives tom and ann conveniently enough this is scripted well enough to where it gave tom and ann a chance to talk that uh, that is until another patient needed some help <laughs> but he, the way they um structure the especially the medical bus where Lourdes always has to something to do right when Tom and Ann have their moment to talk. Kind of interesting, but you know, yeah, small. So I, I guess they kind of uh, time her emotional fits. Exactly. They're like, Oh, she's about to flip out. Let's go talk, <laughs> <laughs> which is often in this episode. So back and forth. So we go back to Weaver and tech and they are digging into Tech's past. And all of a sudden, something lands on the hood of the vehicle. And I had my second heart attack of the night. <laughs> so that that freaked the heck out of me. I'm sorry. I wasn't expecting it. And it, boom, I was like, oh. <laughs> so it's a little kid with a harness on her. And uh, this obviously stops the convoy. But conveniently, the little girl comes to just in time. <laughs> Because Weaver and and Tom are kind of debating her fate, you know. Weaver's like, "Oh, we can't, we can't mess with her." And Tom's it's, like, "We gotta it's help." It's kind of good that these harness kids have the super strength, but having the super strength, you think she would have done more damage to the vehicle? <laughs> Bad little harness girl. You couldn't stop a freaking truck. Come on. So when you, which side were you on when Weaver is saying, you know, I don't know about this and Tom saying, Hey, we can't leave her and all that jazz. You know, Tom's going to say that. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of uh, on Weaver's side at this point. Viewing what I have seen so far of this whole series, I was definitely on Weaver's side. Me too. And I'm, you know, how many times do you got to get zapped before you finally go, oh, okay. I guess, you know, a spade is actually a spade. Right. We shift back to Hal and Maggie and more of their exchange. Now, this time Maggie is driving, which I was like, hey, wait a minute. How'd that happen? <laughs> when, when did they switch? 
<laughs> and then uh, she's a woman driver, so the truck is overheating at this point. And then Pope is like, he knows right where to go to find water. You know, there's a river right up where. How do you know? Well, I used to go this way all the time when I'd go to see my children. Yeah, now I think this is, the, to, to me, this was the wow moment. Oh. Pope has kids. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> do we really Which, want to know what kind of kids Pope has spawned? And and you know what? To to me also, this was kind of foreshadowing because I got a sneaking suspicion we're gonna we we're, we're gonna meet these kids. Yeah, isn't that awesome? How this show works? <laughs> With like, wow! I suspect that you used to be something in the military. Bam! You were. You know, it's just like instant mm -hmm. payoff. Tom and Ann speculate about winning the war and what they would do with the Harness Kids. That's an interesting conversation. What should you do with these Harness Kids if you can get those aliens off the planet? Would you be able to trust them? Well, if you can, I'd say if you can success, successfully take the harnesses off of these kids, and I mean, if you're as successful as they they were with Ben, I'd I'd say. I'd say you're okay. Or if we elected Pope to, as the new president, do you think he'd just dispatch of them? No, nah, he 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 put them on a firing squad. <laughs> he'd be like at the end of a firing squad, definitely. Yeah, there's no more deer season. There's now harness kid season. You know that's what Pope would do. Matt is staring at the harness girl as he brings her some food, and they have a nice little kid conversation. While the greedy harness girl chokes down all that food. <laughs> why are they so hungry? Have you ever thought about why? Are they I don't know. I, I think it must have to do with it must have some marijuana in her system. <laughs> she, she has a case of the munchies, definitely. <laughs> nice. Is, could it be something along the lines that when you have that harness on, you don't require regular food? Yeah, I think you're right. That's definitely what's going on. Something... Some type of nourishment is supplied to them from the, uh, I don't know, a parasite, I guess, Ugh. that harness is. Gross. And so I think that's what's going on. So once it's removed, they have, uh, they, they, they need, they're, they're hungry. I, I, I can see that. that. That's plausible to me. Okay. We've solved it. <laughs> Write that down in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Pope has figured out that the radiator hose has a hole in it. Now, Hal goes to the river to go get some water in a uh, tank or a jug or whatever. And that leaves Pope and Maggie there to talk. So at this point, Pope says to Maggie, hey, what's going to happen when he finds out who and what you really are? Did you have any guesses without going forward into the show? Right at that point, did you have any guesses? No, I my guess was that she had some type of a criminal background. I mean, how else is she going to associate herself with Pope? I That's mean, true. I know she had she was raped by Pope's brother and all this stuff, but I knew something in, in order to get in with these guys. Something she she's not letting us know everything other than the cancer about herself. Okay, I went the other direction. I was thinking that. Maybe, maybe she lied about being raped by Pope's brother or something, you know, to to gain favor with the second mass or something. You know, I couldn't couldn't put it together the right way, but I was thinking something along those lines or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so back to the convoy. Anne's now driving the big medical bus. So we've got we've got shifts taking place here on these buses, <laughs> and we see that Charleston is one hundred forty six miles away. And then uh, Tom uh, starts losing his cool, and Lourdes is freaking losing her mind. Tom getting a little frustrated about things, easily. And I think it has a lot to do with Ben being gone. Yeah, and he's well, he's worried about his son, and I know they're kind of far. They're far away from him. Definitely, and Lourdes, obviously, she lost Jamil, but wow, her attitude is just really. Uh, you know, it's really a nasty little attitude. It's, I don't know if that's so much of a grieving attitude or uh, just a frustrated and at the end of your rope kind of attitude. That's what I was thinking anyway. Yeah. 
So back. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. She, I, she, she's going through that grief process, and her, her stage right now is definitely anger. Are we gonna have to go go all Star Wars on this? So <laughs> <laughs> sadness turns to anger, anger to hate. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. These are things that lead to the dark side. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, Pope continues to prod Baggy, but she doesn't seem to want Pope to tell Hal the truth about her. So they, they keep teasing, what is it? What is this? You know, that's what I, I was sitting on the couch asking myself, like, man, what else could it be? What, sh- what has she done, you know? And, well, uh, you know, can, can, can we go back to the radiator hose? Yes. You'd think they would have fixed it up right away with some duct tape. See, where's Jamil when you need him? This there's another part in this that we're gonna need Jamil, and it's just, he's just not there, man. <laughs> he, just, he just couldn't make it one more episode to help us out, help us through these, <laughs> these hard times. <laughs> so Matt and the Harness Girl talk some more, and she is already missing her skitter, and the other. Uh, or her brother as well, I guess. And the, the and and the I thought it was kind of kids. interesting what what we found out about this because we find out that it wasn't really her biological brother, but her skitter brother, <laughs> like one one of the kids that were harnessed, and like these kids are like one big group as we kind of we kind of we kind of learned some of this stuff from the first uh, first season. Yeah. And uh, this her this is her uh, and. The, the, this is her skitter brother, I guess we could call it, because as as we can tell by her face, she's turning into one of them as well. Is she not disgusting or what? Yeah, it's, that's that's and I think unfortunately that's the only really special effects we see in the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes that budget, Matt. As a mason will do, slips out where they're headed. Did you find that to be an uh-oh moment? Well, he spills the whole beans to her. What was he thinking? And he is going to get the award, isn't he? <laughs> he, I, that, that, that was the moment. It's like those Masons cannot. It always has to go to a Mason almost. <laughs> they can't oh. keep their mouths shut to save their life. Oh, my goodness. And every crowd is a Mason, and they will spill the beans. And my my gosh, it takes after Tom's wife's side because Tom's not like that. So <laughs> <laughs> you're acting just like your mother. So Weaver and Tech continue down the long, dark road of Tech's military life. We find out that Tech wants to keep going once they get to Charleston. This I found interesting because he's not a pope style character you know we've come to find out he's got more of a conscience and and things of that nature and he, it's... He, he's more like an ogre his <laughs> layers <laughs> nice reference reference to another spielberg type project <laughs> and so he he's you know saying hey i want to get you guys there safe and then i'm gonna keep going and that kind of threw me for a little loop because I wasn't expecting him to say that. The harness girl can feel her brother approaching. And then just then, conveniently enough, he bounces off the side of the bus. And this is where you have the third heart attack of the night. Yeah. Here's a bump. Threw me a little for a little loop. It was just a mild one. <laughs> <laughs> now the second mass stops the convoy to look for the girl's skitter brother. And uh, I was like, uh-oh, here we go. They're, you know, they're starting to focus too much attention on her and what she has to say. You know what I mean? That whole situation is starting to drive the convoy, kind of. And they should have left her. Should have left her behind. Yep. Pope, Hal, and Maggie fix the truck without Jamil, And they're back on the road. This is when Maggie rolls up the windows and... House kind of grilling her like, well, you know, did Pope say something to you? But, you know, they're having that girlfriend boyfriend exchange. Maggie reveals that she was a junkie and a thief. She also reveals that she's been to prison and had a kid that she gave up. 
And then she says that's all. But Alex, at this point, were you thinking to yourself, is that all? I'm thinking no. I'm thinking there's going to be more. I'm I'm wondering after after thinking about it a while. I'm wonder if she talks about this guy she ran away with. Yep. I want. I wonder if it was Pope's brother. And will we, you know, if it's not Pope's brother, will we run into this guy? You know, <laughs> you know how that goes. Yeah. They mention a character and then bam. And and uh, all all I can say now is while thinking, oh hell, better be careful because she'll shoot him too. <laughs> uh, call her the Black Widow. <laughs> After she's done with you, it's over. No divorce papers necessary. All right. Uh, the second mass has Weaver play eeny, meeny, miny, mo in order to pick a route to Charleston. <laughs> Just pick one. <laughs> like eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yeah, they got like two ways that they can go. <laughs> Left or right. Check a res grab a resistance by the toe. <laughs> but uh, so... <laughs> He picks his route, and then uh, the girl's brother comes back, and the girl uses her freaking super kid strength on Matt, bounces him off the wall, and, and pushes Ann out of the way as well. I'm glad real kids, regular kids, don't have that kind of power. I'd be in trouble. <laughs> My nephews and nieces, they'd beat the snot out of me all the time. So, oh, that, Yeah, and, you know, and poor little, poor little Matt, he's knocked unconscious and he's like well you're supposed to stay here with us and she's like nope i'm going to tell <laughs> and uh what one thing that i don't think we talked about that matt has been kind of recording about like the whole trip in his little uh journal the book of knowledge <laughs> this book of knowledge the great big book of everything <laughs> <laughs> and and in in this book, he, he there was a neat exchange earlier between between the two between the two kids, and and she she wrote the words down in his journal maybe as in maybe she'll go with them to to their destination to North <laughs> Carolina. <laughs> yes, no, maybe so. Yeah. Circle, please. Circle one and return. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of uh, grade school all over again, buddy. So Matt comes to and speculates whether Ben loves the rebel skitters more than his own family. Ben, um, then uh, asks Tom to find his journal. So he's like, ready to add more to the book of knowledge, I see. And and it... it it, it was then. It was right here where I thought, "Oh, she took it." Oh, I wonder what's in there that would have helped them, though. I'm. I don't know. I'm sure it would probably could have. I. I. I mean, for one thing, the whole second mass is heading to heading to Carolina there, so you know, kind of wonder if the whole if the the whole alien invasion crew was just gonna bomb the heck out of Carolina. <laughs> Destroy them. <laughs> the second mass is no more. Yeah, we used their little tiny kids' uh, notes, and we were able to take you down from those notes. That'd been that'd been a terrible ending to the series. Now, Lourdes is breaking down again once she figures out her patient is dead. I guess you haven't been keeping a good enough eye on him, Lourdes. Then we her, call that neglect. Exactly. Then her and <laughs> Anne, her and Anne kind of get into it as well. And I'm like, oh my goodness, calm down there, Lourdes. She's really, I mean, what a total about face from her character last season. Totally different. So Maggie continues to let Hal digest her sudden revelations about her past. Then all of a sudden, they get ambushed. And Pope screams, S did he say something like, come and get us? Yeah. Come and get us. I was like, oh crap, they're in trouble. And, and then it just like ends right there. Yeah, and I thought and this was a skitter setup. I thought the girl, her brothers in arms. I thought the rebellion skitters kind of kidnapped them and were going to use them as some sort of a bargaining agent. Well, with like with the bright lights and stuff, I thought, oh great, here we got the skitters waiting for them. Yeah, and it kind of kind of gave me the the 
a Blair Witch moment. If you remember <laughs> at the end of the Blair Witch where the three kids finally bite it, and it was just sudden and quick, just like that. You're like, oh, wasn't expecting this. <laughs> I knew they couldn't be killed at this moment, but I thought for sure they were kidnapped. Yeah. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Minute. Weaver and Tech have more of a heart to heart. They this is a tech centric episode, I hate to say, but it is. Uh Tech reveals that he led a team into an ambush back in his military days. And then Weaver gives Tech a lesson in reverse psychology. You killed him. You killed those people. No, I didn't. <laughs> He's like, I know you didn't. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Who's on first? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Weaver really uh confides in tech at this point because he reveals that he wanted to leave the second mass after that battle of fitchburg can we get that on dvd please can i see that battle in in action Are yeah they... you you know what it seems like there's a whole lot of uh references to this battle yeah and very little is said other than what you can see on the online comic and as far as i know the online comic hasn't been updated in almost a month and we can't uh you know, maybe they don't have the special effects to uh, make that b big enough battle happen or something, but or make multiple ones, you know, battles like that happen. But I would love to know and see what really went down. It's something that would be a great extra if they would put it on something. Right, or like make it into a, if they're like for the DVD release coming up, Next year, make it into a motion comic. Yeah, anything. Anything where we can get some uh, details. Because, yeah, you definitely can put that on, on DVD easily. Why not? So at this point, we kind of find out a little more about Weaver. He was ready to bail out of this whole thing. This is a yeah, lot. Yeah, that was kind of surprising, wasn't it? Yeah, this is a lot for the people in this situation. This is a lot for them to handle. These mistakes can cost lives and... You know, he kind of just didn't want to deal with it after that, but he felt would have felt bad about, hey, what happens to the second mass if I take off? So he, he stayed. And, uh, you know, it's, man, I didn't know that. That's that's an interesting uh, revelation to find out. So yeah. as they continue on with this convoy, we get to the point where they come to a halt. And the bridge is out. This bridge is not out by a few feet. This bridge is out, out. And I was thinking to myself, too bad Jamil is gone or else we could use him right now. A stick of bubble gum, you know, some the leftover parts from that GTO. He'd have had that bridge up and running in no time. Yeah, no kidding. And then th then you see the, the, the site of carolina there <laughs> Char and Charleston the first don't look thing hot. that that came my that came to my mind was look they just arrived in atlanta they better be careful of the walking dead <laughs> you know i was thinking wow you're pinned in on this bridge that is broken out you have no way to retreat you know if they come from behind you that's what i was thinking i was like oh, it's gonna here's the trap it's a trap it's a trap. <laughs> here it here it comes, but no, it it doesn't uh, doesn't happen that way. Lord and and, and their, well, their hopes are dashed. The entire second mass and and company, they, there's like, where do we go now? It's very dire straits. Um, within that little scene there, Lordis had apologized to Anne, but it just kind of was out of place, so I just put it after that. Uh, okay. So maybe she'll come back to her senses. Who knows? She's hot, cold, hot, cold. Uh, back to the convoy. Tom and Ann talk about the situation that the second mass is in. And then Tom is just, he's overcome, like you said. He, everybody's upset, but he's really, he's really overcome. He's in tears. I was waiting for Weaver to go up to him and say, told you so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We should have off that woman. I told you I warned you. No, but uh, now it's Tech's turn in true writing 101 style. It's Tech's turn to give Weaver a pep talk, an uplifting message, and he sure does. Uh, so You better tell him something, otherwise just make it up. You better tell him something. <laughs> or I'll, I'll, put something, I'll put a bullet in your head. <laughs> no. 
that didn't happen. No. Uh, Weaver gets the second mass's attention by shooting a gun into the air. That was great, man. Like, bam, wasted round. All right, everybody, come here. <laughs> or the next <laughs> or the next niner in all of you. <laughs> so he delivers like another good speech. Weaver is good at delivering speeches. And I was very proud of him in that moment. His well, character. he'd make a good politician. Yeah. Yeah, because he can lead you down a dead end road, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when they got to that bridge like that, were you thinking what I was thinking? I was like, oh, now you got to go back around and go to that other route. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I, 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 I was like, you know what? I bet you something's going on in that town, even though it looks like it's completely yeah. devastated. I think appearances are a little deceiving. Yeah, and I thought to myself, yeah, the town looks devastated, but everywhere looks devastated. That's what I was thinking. So I was like, oh, just go back around, you know, try and get some more fuel. Go back around to the other way that you didn't pick. The and do, do you notice how they're on some back rural, rural road after that? They're on some dirt road? Yeah. Yeah, they were. Yes, they were. And uh, that uh, Falling Skies app, it worked perfectly this week. And it said uh, during some of those driving scenes of the wind gust reached up to 80 miles an hour. Oh, wow. Now, now that's funny because I wasn't getting any background information on this episode at all through through my app. My app was still kind of glitchy. Nice. We I'm are. Glad, having, I'm glad you got something out of it. We're having two totally different experiences with that app. <laughs> so after that speech, Die hears something. Who goes there? He he got one line this week. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, Die, talk about a big red shirt. I mean, he hasn't had any, like, he, he was kind of a main character in the first season. And this season, he's just been hardly non-existent. And, Alex, when we hear the wrestling, were you shocked at who comes out? Yeah, we see our old friend, Colonel Porter. He's here, everybody. Salute him. Porter is here, and he's got forces, and they're dressed to impress, might I add. They they have the U.S. Army. They, they introduce themselves as the Continental Army. I love that. That is awesome. They were dressed to the nines, and they, they looked, looked dapper. Uh, so now uh, they have Hal, Pope, and Maggie. That's who stopped them. So I was like, oh, okay, now it makes sense. Mm-hmm. That they're with them. That was cool. That was really cool reveal at the end of the show. So at the very, very end, Hal tells Matt that he has a strong feeling that they'll see Ben again. It's either a strong feeling or he read the script. Whichever. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Matt, you can't read that fast. I've already read far enough ahead. Ben is coming back. <laughs> we will see him again. So can we take a quick look ahead at, at next week? It's just I it yeah go ahead I'll 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 give you my feelings about it after we discuss it. Okay. So next week the price of greatness. The second mass encounters new people as Tom happens upon his former mentor John Locke for you lost fans. Yeah. <laughs> Yet trust issues abound. Meanwhile, Maggie suspects that Pope will soon exit from the group and Tector embraces his military past. Oh, yeah, things are heating up. So let's hope we get a better episode next week. Alex, ratings, what do you give it out of 10? What do I give it out of 10? Yes. Um, I give it a lot better than the previous episode because, as everybody knows, I was super <laughs> critical of the previous episode. In the vein of the Olympics, you gave it a an East German 4, right? That's right. <laughs> um, this, this episode, I would say, because we learned a lot about certain characters yep. uh that was a it was character development i really like this episode just because of that alone and i'll give it an eight out okay. of ten okay nice i'm giving it a seven out of ten i did like the conversations um i thought some of them were a little um too cliche though you well know, i thought i thought hale's reaction though we didn't really talk about hale's reaction all that much hale was kind of cold to maggie's revelation and i guess if i were hale you know what? With everything that's gone on before, I would have just let it go. 
Yeah, I think you would have to. Uh, you know, you're basically in a post-apocalyptic world now. Right. You know? It's like, you know what? You're starting all over. Yeah. Just let it go. Drug use. That's the least of your concerns at this point. All right. So you're you're giving it eight. I'm giving it a seven out of ten. Uh, listeners, what are you guys giving it? You can hit us up at tprfans at yahoo.com. That's tprfans at yahoo.com. Or call the voicemail line that's open 24 7. That's plus one 810 309 8445. That's plus one 810 309 8445. Regular toll charges do apply. Or hit us up on Twitter at Falling Skies FP. That's just Falling Skies FP all squished together. Tell us what you rated this episode. Alex, I had one uh, email from James. All right. He hit us up. He says, hey, Hank and Alex. So what happened this week? Does the girl that gets hit by the truck remind us of anyone else? That How about that guy from District 12? <laughs> <laughs> she looks like she is half a prawn. <laughs> nice. I like that part. Well, I think she's heading that way anyway. Oh, she looked gross. Or she looked like... Uh, one of the uh, characters off of Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, the Barnacle Bell. <laughs> I have a feeling that the second mass is going to have to start treating these harnessed kids as they treat, as the threat that they actually are. Um, speaking of threats, what is with the Mason family? They keep giving away all the military secrets to the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> There's less gossiping on the view. Hmm, seems like this is an emotional episode. Missing brothers, Afghanistan, war stories, father-son issues, Lourdes. It's worse than days of our lives. So this week's episode gets that it feels like a daytime TV award. <laughs> nice. I really want this show to be great, but with lines like, we are only a heartbeat away from death and cliche scenes where Marines learn that they still have honor and honorable commanders, it seems that this show has jumped the shark. Oops. Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong uh, sound effect. He's ready to make the jump. Come on, Fonzie, you can do it. <laughs> this is Jump the Shark. This was this podcast. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, not as bad as Australia in the Olympics, though. That's been really bad. You Yanks are kicking our butts. Thanks it's funny, a lot, guys. It's funny because I, I was just watching uh, the semifinal water, ladies water polo where, uh, where the uh, United States beat Australia, unfortunately. <laughs> no. Sorry, James. We're just tearing and, it up. We got I thought. I thought. On a side note, what was cool about that is that they had uh, the announcers who normally do ice hockey on uh, on network TV. <laughs> oh, the announcers, because you know what? It's almost the exact same game. Awesome. They got penalty boxes and stuff too. It's it, it, it's neat. I, I've cool. learned a lot about water polo this this Olympic season. <laughs> Very interesting. All right, Alex, it's time to officially hand out the Big Mike Stupid, <laughs> the Stupid Big Mike Memorial Trophy. Um, I think it's unanimous that it's going to go to to Matt, correct? Yeah, I, yes. I, that, that's, that's where I think it should be. All right, Matt, collecting yet another trophy <laughs> for the Mason family. Outstanding, my friend. Outstanding, outstanding. <laughs> Alex, any final thoughts before we wrap this show up? No, I think what we're going to see, though, um, Charleston is going to be a little too good to be true in the up last remaining episodes. Okay. And um, I know I kind of predicted that we would get to Charleston at the end of the last second season episode, but we were, I guess we're going to be in Charleston for the next two episodes. So we got John Locke, who's our president by the looks of things. (laughs) 
And we know that John Locke isn't going to be staying because he is going to be in a new ABC series that kind of looks good called... 666 Park Avenue. That's it. That, and and I'm, I'm going to be watching that, so... <laughs> This wasn't supposed to happen. That's all we need. Somebody to drop that sound bite, and that's it. <laughs> that, that's it. This podcast will have jumped the shark at that point. Awesome, awesome, and, awesome. And oh. One, one, one quick side note. My yeah. my daughter and I, we were just watching TV and stuff. I was trying to find old episodes of Happy Days, and on the old Xbox 360, uh, you can you can get the YouTube app, <laughs> and I showed her. I I showed her the the Fonzie jumping the shark because she 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 knew it came from Happy Days that term she was really <laughs> familiar with that term jumping the shark and so we watched the the, the two minute clip of Fonzie <laughs> jumping the shark. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> epic, epic, epic! Is that it, Alex? That that that's all. I'm I'm. I'm <laughs> Then the next two episodes, I'm really hyped about, so I can't wait. Me too. I'm very excited. Uh, I didn't know what to make of this episode at first. You know, when it, I was just thrust into the uh, conversations, I was thinking, uh, you know, are they going to do this the whole episode or or what happened? You know, but it was good. It was uh, a decent episode, and I think we're going to really pick up the pace and... I thought, some... I thought it was my favorite episode of Love Boat. <laughs> nice. We just didn't have as much smooching. <laughs> nice. And we, and we didn't have Doc fixing drinks. Oh, that's awesome. But, folks, we really appreciate you guys tuning in. But for Alex Cruz, I'm Hank Davis, my friends. And until next time, we're signing off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>